Hi everybody, it's Dandruff and welcome to the bonus cartridge for Monday, January 26th, 2018. I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, regular regular show. I, I don't know what to call it. Regular good news cartridge. That's what you call it, Dandruff. Don't call it a, don't try to call it something else. Hey, this case is open. Hey, look. Yay. We're fixing things live on air. Yay. Live on air. It's an edited show, Dandruff. I know it's not really edited, but you still render it and all that crap because it's part of the other thing i don't know if anybody knows but when i do these when i do the show it's uh the audio is all one big chunk okay i usually don't try to stop recording the audio even if i have to do something like cut and wait for the um camera to cool down i uh generally don't cut the audio because it's a pain in the butt it's just a, it's just easier to have one big long audio thing and then just put stuff uh on it and do whatever so yeah um so over the weekend, I went to Seattle. I'm trying to unlock my phone because I have a phone now. And I turn it off while I'm recording. <coughs> but I figure I can turn it on during the end card because, hey, what do you know? I can do whatever. And somebody may catch me off guard one day while I'm recording the end card. And we can have a little conversation in, in the end cards. That would, be, that would be a lot of fun. Live conversation and whatnot. So, I, I'm going to avoid talking about... A specific subject. Let's just say that. Let's just say a specific subject because, like, quite frankly, I've been. Uh, I think my. I think um, a lot of my audience may uh, be a little bit tired of uh, searching down the Gordon. Um. <laughs> um. So we're gonna leave it at that. Um. I just. There have been some stuff I've learned. It's doesn't really change anything if you want to we'll talk about it tomorrow when i have what I, I don't know we may do an episode on it tomorrow again i'm not trying to get more views from it i'll admit that last week i was trying to get views from it this time no 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 game's out uh, thing is basically just a train wreck well, well we'll talk about it tomorrow and talk about it tomorrow we'll talk about it tomorrow but yeah so let's talk about Euro gamer and rock, rock paper shotgun. So, um, I doubt that this is actually the that um, that uh, Reed Pop acquiring all of these media companies is going to change uh, um, rock paper shotgun because, well, they kind of write some uh, I I would consider low quality content, some non tent if you will. Um, and uh, Kotaku does the same thing. I tend to I see some from I just see a lot of that from Polygon. I see some of it from Destructoid. Sometimes I actually like it from Destructoid when they do their uh, faux exclusive. Uh, when it's like, oh, or it, this this is obviously a parody article. I like parody articles when they're supposed to be parody articles, not when they're like supposed to halfway be serious, like Kotaku does sometimes. So um, yeah, Kotaku just tends to. Uh, uh, take something and over exaggerate it, whereas Destructoid will actually make something up that is just ridiculous, and I I wait I, I enjoy that much better. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't. I, what I'm worried about is Eurogamer. Um, Eurogamer is tends to be one of the more solid, more dependable, more in depth searching. Um, uh, video game media outlets. Uh, they do a really, really good job. They also are in conjunction with Digital Foundry, who are known for their scrutinizing tests of frame rates of most video games, including console games. They uh, have a very, very, they have very sophisticated equipment and use uh, pretty much programmed runs to determine benchmarks for both PlayStation 4 and, and Xbox One. The thing with um, uh, with benchmarking a console is you pretty much have to stay in a in a similar path in order to get similar performances in similar areas in in video games because if you're in two different areas in a game on two different consoles it may as well just be two different games um, if you're in the same area like um, it's a good the Witcher 3 I know that's kind of an older game now but the Witcher 3 if if you want you want to be in the same zones for all three versions so that way you can compare all three see not only which graphic graphics are the best but also which one has the highest frame rates so I am I'm really worried to see if they change 
more than likely they won't because companies get bought up all the time and nothing really happens so we'll see i mean look at look at humble bundle they were acquired by ign um uh take two but kerbal space program though they did not buy squad um and squad continues to work on the game you know that that seems to be going fairly well speaking of which kerbal space program has some dlc coming out next week which means i'm gonna be playing my favorite game again that's gonna be really cool um it's gonna be kind of nifty because i mean I, I have to buy it i don't care if it's take two i have to buy it it's it's my favorite game i'm going to buy all the dlc for my favorite game the one question i want to know though is that how's it going to work because i don't own the steam version i own the version off of their website because uh at the time i was like i don't want to have all my games on steam it's just a, that's not something I, I, don't, I don't know i was really I, I i had no idea what the heck i was thinking i have no i, I honestly can't excuse my myself from six years ago um from when i when i actually bought it because i don't like i don't i should have just bought it on steam um i regret that but oh well uh maybe one of these days when i have 20 dollars to throw around in carbal cool on sale i'll just buy for 20 bucks and throw it in my steam account though i keep telling myself i'm gonna do that and end up spending the money on a game that i don't have yet so circle of life continues um Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, uh, somebody in my Discord, and I, I, I don't want to, I don't know if I remember who, I don't remember who. Uh, somebody in my Discord was saying something about how they were kind of a little bit outraged that Kerbal Space Program was going to be, that, that the expansion, the DLC is going to be $15. Um, it is my understanding that this is a full expansion, or at least they are adding they are adding content. They're going to be adding parts to the game. Um, I would consider the game as it stands to be a fully released game, to be a full fledged game. Um, it definitely does things that no other game does. Um, it's I'm trying to think of like what well, like I don't know why someone would want this to be free. It doesn't make sense to me why this should be free. It's great when games can do that, when companies can do that, but this game I don't see that this expansion being free at all. Anything that was released during early access they said was going to be free and they did hold to that. So I don't know. It's I, I I'm fine with paying fifteen dollars for more content out of Kerbal Space Program. Um, it is only a forty dollar game as it is. It'll raise the price full the full price up to fifty five dollars. I I don't think that's necessarily too terrible. That might just be me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, I think we're ha I think this about wraps it up. So uh, we'll talk more about uh, that that Gordon finding game tomorrow. Um, uh, all right, so uh, social media links are over here. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, you, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. Go visit that Patreon link one because then I may remember to call it Facebook. Yay, because I'll have money. Click up here to watch the full episode for today's show. Click down here to watch Friday's episode, which was about that thing being released. And then click over here to subscribe to my wonderful, wonderful channel. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow.